All right, folks. So today we're talking about dummy loads, specifically this one, which is giving me problems the other day. So uh, I had to come up with a workaround or a plan. But the story goes something like this. I test a lot of radios and I needed something with a BNC plug on it so I could test these QRP radios that have multiple BNC type adapters on them. And I was testing and it, was, it wasn't actually this radio. I'll show you that. It was this one. The Yesu, and it's got two ports on the back of it. I don't know if you can see that, if it'll zoom in. But there you go, two BNC ports. And I was I thought I had this thing connected correctly, and I was doing some transmit tests and I was measuring power and stuff like that. And the SWR was going off the scale for the radio. And I'm like, what in the heck is going on? And because the Yesu has two different inputs, I thought for sure that this was connected to the wrong port. So I started looking through the manual and I'm like, hey, how do you switch the antenna? I know the bottom one's UHF, VHF. Uh, that was the type of testing I was doing. And it just let me on this wild goose chase. And then I finally decided to test the dummy load. I said, well, let me see what's going on with the dummy load. And I test it. And sure enough, it was bad. Now, this dummy load, I bought... I don't know when. I mean, it was somewhat recently, and I bought it specifically because it had the BNC connector, and I didn't want to have to connect other dummy loads that I have through a series of adapters. And I just thought this would be easy. And, um, I, well, I guess it came in, and I don't know if I have ever used it or not. And it's probably partially because I'm a dumbass. If I did use it, there potential exists that maybe I did something to damage it. I'm generally pretty careful with that stuff, so I don't think that I did. But, um, it's pretty bad, and I'll show you some charts that, that illustrate that. These are like $20, $25, bucks maybe, something like that. So I ended up buying another one, and uh, I tested this one out. And th these, while they look the same, and I think they're from the same place, they, they, are, they are a little bit different, so I guess maybe they source them from different Chinese houses or not. Let's take a look and see here. They... Um, BNC connectors look pretty similar, so I don't think I have anything to worry about there. Um, this is a much older uh, dummy load that I have, and this is actually a bird, and I'll hold it up here, and you can see it's a model 10TMN, and if you look in there, it's uh, 10 watts, 50 ohms, and it says it goes to 2001 is when this thing was built, so this thing's like 25 years old, 24 years old, or something like that. I think this goes up to 2.3 gigahertz. Uh, both of these claim... Here's the bad one, DC to three gigahertz. And I think this one says uh, DC to three gigahertz. So we, so we tested all that. I, I think the moral of the story is, is that test your stuff always because it could be a problem. So in order to test this stuff, I just take my Nano VNA. This is the SVA 4401A. It's a little bit uh, more feature rich Nano VNA. And I just take this and I connect it to the S11 port or here it's called at port one. And what you can see here is, is that once I connected that, my SWR just went right off the roof. Don't worry, we're going to look at screenshots and make it easier on you. This is just a span from 3 to 30 megahertz. Um, but once I saw this, I said, hey, I've got a problem. Let's do some more extensive testing. All right, so here is the bad dummy load. And I ran this test, and you can see it's from 3 to 30 megahertz. And I just told you I was testing the UHF and VHF, but my nano VNA is configured to test HF when I turn it on. So I turned it on, and this is what I saw. Um, all these data points, you can see right here, INF for infinity for the SWR. Anyhow, it's terrible, and it indicates that there's something wrong. Now, if you look over here on Smith chart, you'll see all my data points are over here indicating an open load. Now, so these uh, load tester, I mean, these dummy loads typically have a resistor in there, and I suspect something happened, and the resistor either became disconnected, and maybe I dropped it or something, or maybe the resistor was bad, or maybe it was never soldered right, or maybe it just burned up, but uh, that's what I suspect. And so here I am, I did a sweep on this thing to see what it looked like from 3 megahertz to 3 gigahertz. So if you remember, it says it's good from DC to 3 gigahertz. And it's not usable anywhere. I mean, there's a couple of low points here around 4 uh, SWR and down here is like a 2.1. But you, you couldn't use this for anything. So obviously it's broken or it's damaged. So here is the similar dummy load that I bought, uh, the replacement. And so when you take a look at the sweep, 3 to uh, 30 megahertz, that's pretty good. Everything is right here in the middle, close to the bullseye. Uh, we have 1.06, 1.02. That's pretty good. So, you know, right now I'm happy with it. I just hope nothing happens to it and uh, it wears out. So this is from 3 to 30. When I take a look at it from 3 to 500, this would cover the UHF, EHF uh, test that I was doing. It's still good, man. I mean, it goes from 1.07 to 1.258. 
Now, I noticed that some of these might be different than markers that we looked at before, but that's because of the number of data points when you increase the span. So there's nothing to worry about or panic about or get upset about or protest over there. You know, most hams operate between three and 500, right? So I think we're good with using this one. Um, now, here's where it gets a little tricky. If we go all the way up to three gigahertz, I put a marker out here at the highest point, which is uh, 2.568 uh, gigahertz. Uh, if you take a look at there, we have a higher SWR 2.8 to 1. But, I mean, that's still really not that bad. It's really not that bad. But, you know, if you're going to do some pre precision type stuff as you get higher up in the frequencies, I, I don't think I would use this one. Now, just for giggles, here is the bird. Now, keep in mind, the other two BNC connectors that I showed you, they're around $20, $25 a piece. That bird uh, dummy load is like $180. So, I mean, that's a significant investment. But if you think about it, I paid in the course of two years forty dollars for two dummy loads. When you know maybe maybe the bird's not a bad investment over the life of it. This one is twenty five years old. So anyhow, if you take a look at it, uh, here is three to thirty megahertz. I don't know why that bar keeps coming up; it drives me crazy. But uh, it looks pretty good, right? We got one point oh six all the way up to one point oh one seven. So that's pretty pretty good. And then if we take a look here, it's all the way up to 500 megahertz. It goes all the way up to 1.288. So the performance here is on par with what we saw with the $20 BNC uh, load. Now here's a little bit of a difference. If we take a look all the way up to 3 gigahertz, we do have a spike at uh, 1.9 gigahertz at around 2.1. But again, I don't, I don't think that this is a dummy load that I would advocate using. Uh, maybe it's okay, depending upon what you're testing, uh, all the way up to 3 gigahertz, but I, I would prefer to see something with a little bit flatter response. So again, I think the real gist of this is test your stuff, make sure you know how it performs, and then that way you, don't get, you shouldn't get unexpected results. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I will do my best to respond.